Welcome to the final round of the Dana Open. We are at Highland Meadows Golf Club in Sylvania, Ohio, just outside Toledo near the Michigan State line. Pretty gusty winds out there, challenging today, 15 mile an hour winds, but there's Lynn Grant started today with a six shot lead. That's been narrowed down to four. Minji Lee with 300 par on her round today. Allison Corpus, U.S. Women's Open champ from last week. She's there. Stephanie Kiriaku, she's at 100 today. Gabby Lopez making a run. And here's our announcers. I'm Jim Gallagher, Jr. I'll be alongside with Morgan Pressel, Karen Stupples, and Trip Eisenhower. They'll be on the golf course. We've got some exciting action and the crowds are out and they're ready to see some great golf. Hey, let's go out to the ninth green. Minji Lee, Trip Eisenhower will be with this group. Indeed, my friend, you are exactly right. Gusty winds is going to be challenged today, but Minji Lee, you would expe expect with a ball striker in these conditions to be a part of the story. And she's certainly making some noise here. This one breaks to her right. She's one from seven behind, five behind, two behind, and three of her wins. That's got to go. She's making a run today. Good solid front nine for her. She'll stay at 14 under. We'll go over to the seventh. Lynn Grant, our leader. Karen Stupples is with this group. Got herself in a nice spot here, laying up with a hybrid. Had over 300 yards to the flag, so no need to do anything crazy here. Long par five, just trying to get it in play. You gotta lay it up in the, oh, she lays it up in the rough. That'll be a tricky shot, nestled down there. So the Castro now to par through the eighth hole today. Playing 142. Yeah, hole location very accessible today. Jim on the right side, but playing into the wind. And we're gonna see quite a few players back off their shots just like this, trying to judge exactly where these swirling winds are coming from. So different than yesterday. There was not a breath of wind, especially in the afternoon after the delay. You've played in some windy conditions. What are some of the keys to look for? Just keep it smooth. Try not to fight the wind too much. Yeah. Oh, she did. Nice Beautifully shot. done there. Yeah, absolutely. Good chance for birdie at eight. Also in this group, Maria Fossey. She's even par on her rounds. She's tied for fifth now at 12 under. It'll also be a little bit of a different rhythm today, Jim. Players out here for, what, probably almost 10 hours yesterday from the time they arrived on property. Today playing in twosomes. We'll have a better cadence to their round. Yeah, nearly a four hour delay yesterday. Oh, she does not like that. Got really steep with that one. Yeah, she hates it. It'll go down towards the bunker. How plenty of green to work with, but big mistake here on the par three of that short hole. Says she had a game plan of being a little more conservative, but that didn't pay off there. All right, Lopez here at the tenth, right out of the rough. I think Gabby's been some inspiration for a lot of players on this leaderboard came from so far behind last year to win. And players knowing that they're going to need to do something special to catch Lynn Grant. And maybe even get a little bit of help. All right, Emily Pedersen now at the nice little struggle for her. Been a tough hole today. I think it's the toughest hole last time I looked on the golf course hole location back on that back right front right portion excuse me do not want to miss it right here well, that's not right There's plenty of green to work with all right back over to seven lynn grant's third shot karen yes it did sit down just a little bit but ultimately from the right side of this fairway the flag is all the way on the left side she's created an angle for herself a little bit downwind i think you have to expect this to release oh, well played there the judge may just trickle off under the fringe but come back a little bit there you go that's a little bit better got a good chance for birdie now yeah, it's putting right back up the fall line really good spot allison corpus now from the fairway here at nine one under on her round. I feel like you're right on the line, so it just wants to 
Oh, good looking shot there. Greens are still soft. We had all that rain yesterday. Players are able to go right at it. All right, this is actually the 17th fairway. Kiriaku now, this is, she's playing the seventh, drove it under the trees and had to hit it down to here, Karen. Yeah, she had no other choice, really. Um, it would have been an impossible sideways pitch out. And at least here she's given herself a chance of getting to the green in three. She's only got 154, so not too bad at all from here. It is downwind, though, and the hole location is on the side of the green that's closest to her. She was able to laser the flag with a distance measuring device, so that really helps the, the caddy with getting the right yardage. Yeah, it's exactly right. You wouldn't think that'd be a big deal, but definitely is there. All right, Maria Fossi, second shot from the bunker here at the par 3-8. Lots of green to work with. Wet sand after all the rain yesterday. Surprised she wasn't able to get a little bit more spin on that one. Yeah, that wasn't her best. Couple bad shots in a row for her. Edidia Shook, now second shot at the 10th. She's been playing some great golf. Yeah, she's just very consistent, Jim. Mm -hmm. Really solid all the way around. Gained a little distance this year. That's making a difference as well. So putting the combination together, it's pretty good. Should be Fossey next for par. She's still trying to get that first LPGA win. Best this season's a 15th place. Tends to play good the second half of the year. But with her talent, I'm a little surprised she hasn't competed a little bit more here, Morgan. Yeah, and I'm surprised you wouldn't necessarily look at this golf course and think that it's a perfect golf course for Maria Fossey. Length is kind of her premium, and I think this golf course takes driver out of the hands of a lot of longer hitters quite often. I think that's why she said she went with more of a, she called it, a smart game plan, less aggressive. I think that's some of the things she's learning as she's out here on the LPGA, but you're right, it does take the driver out of a lot of these players' hands. Maybe yesterday a little softer conditions help, but Completely different day today with the wind gusts. Could get some gusts up in the 20 miles an hour, and that's that could be a big difference here, challenging at the uh, through the end of the day. Got to go. Ouch. Bad tee shot, bad bunker shot, and a bogey at the eighth for Maria. Sometimes you just want it so bad. Over at the 11th, Xi Yulin now second shot from the first cut of rough. They've got the whole location over on that left side again today. Yeah, I'm surprised we don't, haven't had a pin on that right side over there, Jimmy. Yeah, that's usually one they put, usually on Sunday, or at least on the weekends, but good shot there. Great chance for birdie. All right, now Castron has this for birdie. Should be a whole lot of this one. Now yeah, putting from a good spot, just a bit slow up the hill. Couple top 25s here. The Dana Open, a good oh. week this week. Good putt, nice birdie. All right, so should get a birdie there at the eighth. Shot over to the ninth. All right, Kiriaku now for birdie here at the seventh. And this fringe will kick it left at the start, and then it's going to fall back to the right as it approaches the hole. Downhill quite swiftly for the first half of this putt. New putter in the bag for Stephanie this week. Yeah, first time in, what, 12 years she said she switched. Years. Poost now for birdie at nine. Should be a little breaker from right to left coming down the slope. Stay up. Didn't quite get that high enough. Should finish with the par at the front nine. All right, Lynn Grant now, good chance for birdie. Jim, the hole looked to be tilted just a little bit to the right. So downhill and then at the last minute I think this is going to fall right so Pata hasn't been 
the hottest for her today. Greens were slow yesterday. Have they sped up a little bit today? Oh, she was right out of that one. That was a very odd stroke. Yeah. Not committed to that line whatsoever. Just totally tugged that. Well, she said yesterday when she got to 13, she felt a little of the nurse. Someone said, hey, do you have a 59 in you? Things kind of sped up, and what you try to do in this situation is slow that mind down, but not a very confident stroke, to say the least. Steph now for a chance for her par. Yeah, not an awful lot in this one. I just chuckling, Karen, because anybody who's played here long enough has certainly played this hole up the 17th, and <laughs> I, I think I've done it without the laser, where Rock had to walk the entire yardage. Yep. <laughs> We did it old school, Morgan. <laughs> we didn't have the benefits of this new technology. All right, Aditi Ashok for birdie here at the 10th. Gabby Lopez missed her chance for birdie. Got to break a little bit. Got to start it a little bit too far right. All right, Shi Yulin hit that wonderful shot in here. This for birdie at 11. Nice, pays it off. Good shot from out of the first cut of rough. Good birdie at 11. <laughs> Excitement for everyone. I love it. All right, Minji Lee here now at the 10th. Well, the 10th, if you hit it in the fairway, you get to move it. Only one in 10 today because this low area of the fairway is still wet, but she doesn't get to put her hand on the ball. 141. That's a nine iron. She likes this left side of 10. One of the earlier days, she was blocked out by those trees on the left. What a shot. Yeah, she doesn't need to put the head on the ball. Beautiful shot there. Good chance for Purdy again. Watch out for her. Yeah, you could be putting from a better spot mm -mm. straight up the hill there. It's sometimes hard to control the ball coming out of rough, but she does a nice shot. Got a nice kick forward, too, into the right. That helped. Annie Park will be next, looks like. Yes, she is. Now, she got to move it around a little bit, so we know the lie is not a problem. 117 we, yards. This is a wedge. And we should mention that it's only playing preferred lies on two holes, on the first hole and then here on 10, which is almost harder. You were afraid that somebody's <laughs> going to make a mistake, Trip. I know. I, I've never seen it on two holes. I, um, but, I mean, it makes sense. The one in, one in 10 are, are down here in the low parts, and... I'm sure this morning they had some moisture, but right now that they really course has dried out well. Um, this is a poor shot. Mm hmm. Yeah, it depends on the lie short sides yourself here at the 10th. Struggled a little bit yesterday. All right, Maria Fossi now on the ninth. Got the driver here. Going hard up the left side. Might need a decent kick to stay in the fairway. Whoa. It does. And there's the benefit of the softness. Yes, big time. I don't think she'd hit the driver otherwise. Good play there. And we're back at the eighth. Kiriaku will be next here at the par three. Playing 142 today. And kind of feels like it's into the wind a little bit right now, this hole. Uh, wind swirling in general through these big trees but whole location on that right side today and if uh, it's a short side if you go right of this flag so ideally a little bit short and left of it would leave you the best part here great support out here the community really supports this event a lot of people out here today to see some great golf that looks like she's lost that one yeah, it catches the green that's your worst shot that'll work All right, Lynn Grant will be next. You followed her yesterday, Karen. Any difference in kind of the way she's looking, the way she's playing, body language? No, I mean, she's still in, in a good good space with her, her Kelly Mike. I mean, they're still, you know, smiling. And, you know, generally, he's keeping her entertained and occupied. Um, ball striking is still good. Driver has still been very good. Did miss the short putt on the first. And then another one about an eight-footer later on in the round. But... It's not easy out here, and when you have such a low round like yesterday, with the chance of a 59, and knowing that you have a chance of a 59 as well, it just, 
you know, emotionally it can take it out of you. And don't forget you had that four hour delay in the middle of the round. Everybody has to be just a little bit tired. And then you add to the fact that you have such a big lead. It's, it's very hard to, to, to kind of get your head around what you have to do with a real, really great game plan on, on the golf course because you have so many shots in the bank. Exactly. He's won five times on the L.A.T. trying to get that first LPGA win. Uh oh, oh, huge mistake. Just depends on the lie. Got everybody out of the way. Everybody's safe. That nestles down just a little bit. That's going to be a tricky up and down short side herself. So the stake here at the eighth. All right now, Minji Lee, this is for birdie. Uh, you guys mentioned a great spot to pump putt from, but Annie Park after that really poor wedge, she hit a beautiful bunker shot to pretty much tap in distance. Yeah, Morgan, isn't it weird how certain holes just pull you a certain way? You, I mean, that's a good point. She was blocked out by that tree. She was only, you know, 10 yards right of that here. So her eye line, this is a blind fairway from the, from the tee. You can't really see the landing area. Yeah, it is a bit awkward. And as a player, I mean, you know when you've hit a poor shot earlier in the week, it still sits with you in your mind. You try your best to not think about it and, and commit to a different target. But you always have some tendencies. Oh, great putt there. Beautiful. She cuts into that lead. Lynn Grant's in trouble at eight. So this is getting exciting at the Dana Open. Final round. Back at the eighth hole, this is Lynn Grant's second shot at the par three. And, and this is just not easy. Uh, you're right, the ball is sitting down, but more than that, she's going to be landing on a bit of a down slope with not much green to use. Did she make it? She did again. Are you kidding me? What a shot. She makes it at 11 yesterday. That changed the momentum, and <laughs> I bet that one does as well. Ah, uh, that could settle her down. She's looked a bit just unsettled to start this round. Uh, this is a poor lead over this green here. Such a hard shot, but wow. That was fantastic. Absolutely. Game changer right there. That could have been four easily. Well, that's what I was just looking at the leaderboard here. You know, Minji's within three. Mm -hmm. Does... Lynn know that well if she did she had an answer for it she sure did well what a shot that changed things big time all right Kiriaku now for her birdie oh, this one's going to break to the left it's uphill and there is a leaderboard to the left of this green that that if you peer over there is fully updated with the scores so she would have had a chance to have seen Got a 
little bit too high. Golf is such a funny game, though, with the shorter birdie options, opportunities that she's had today. That's how you would have thought she'd make a birdie, and yet here she is chipping in chipping behind Nate Green. Exactly. All right, Maria Fossi second at the ninth. All about controlling the spin for her. Ah, oh, nice. Very nice. Got a good chance to make a bounce back after the bogey at the last hole. All right, second shot at the 10th for Allison Corpus. One under on her round today, 13 under. Needs to get something going right here. Be a good time to do it. Oh, got a good kick back under the green. Yeah, it's a similar so, spot from where Minji just made birdie. Absolutely. Duty is shook now for birdie at 11. Aditi told me that her mom is back home in India, has been staying up in the middle of the night to watch the coverage. So, That's hi, cool. Mom. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Your girl did good. Nice birdie there. Awesome putt. What a great week. Ninth tee. Surprising me, Karen, that this is actually playing as the hardest hole out on the golf course right now. Well, I think that the wind Morgan is actually playing into that equation just a little bit. The, the bunkering down the right makes the, the fairway pinch in a little bit. You have a penalty area that kind of weaves its way up the left side of the fairway as well. And, you know, the feeling is that you want to try and keep it down the right side because the fairway kicks to the left, but the bunkering really does come into play. For someone who likes to hit a bit of a draw, I'm intrigued by this move of teeing up on the very right side of the tee box. I think uh, I agree. Um, but maybe it's just to make sure that she tries to skirt past that, those bunkers and open up the fairway towards the left side a little bit. She seems to like it. Maria Fossi's ball got all the way down to the end of the fairway, and that'll be just fine. Carries it over the bunker, got a good kick off the slope. Ball might be a little above her feet, but that'll work. All right, back over to the 10th. Corpus now for birdie. Got the line there. Just got to roll it over. This to get to 14 under. Sixteen birdies today at the 10th so far. You know, Morgan coming off that emotional win last week. I mean, how do you kind of reset coming into a, a week this week? Now you're in contention again. I don't know. Maybe we should ask her. She seems to be doing it pretty well. I, I'm just impressed with the uh, what. Think about what has happened in her life in the last seven days, even if you want to go the last 10 days and the emotional high, the energy that's expended being in contention and winning and having to do all of the press and all of the obligations and everything else that goes along with it. And to think that she's only had two bogeys all week. She is just playing some incredible golf. Absolutely. Maria Fossi now for birdie to get a bounce back after the bogey at the eighth. Yeah. And she does. Okay. She didn't slap herself on the leg on that one. She fist pumped that one. Nice putt. Good comeback. So, all right. Now to the 11th. Minji Lee, second shot. Yes, I do, mate. But really, uh, a lot of time figuring this out on the wind. It's, it's, according to the compass, it's in out of the right slightly, but it is swirly down here. At times it felt like it was down, but you got to go with the compass and know it's out of the southwest. This is a seven iron. Compass is a great tool trip, one that you can easily slip in your bag and, oh, wow, what a double cross. Big time that mistake. Nearly killed that guy like her compass was off but trying to hit a bit of a fade but just a long pull but it is a tool you can put in your bag you can check it out pull it out at any point to see what the wind's doing above the trees all right she you then now for birdie made one back at the last hole can she make another uh, that's no 
All right, Annie Park second here at the 11th. Yeah, she's 149. She's got six irons, so she's respecting that wind. When she has flighted this down. Got to get down. Yeah, it just came in so low. You're right, Trip. That's nestles back into that first cut. Just went right through the wind, hit it so solid. Not feeling the wind quite as much back there in the fairways. All right, Lynn Grant's just kind of cruising down the fairways after that little chip in on the last hole, made up for kind of a bad tee shot, but gets a birdie, kind of maybe settles herself down. Kamiyaku will be next, should be first to hit, I should say. Yeah, you can see she's uh She's trying to see uh, see where the flag is. The flag is kind of hidden with the grandstand in the back. It's full house in that grandstand today, so difficult to see where the flag oh, is on the green. Just messed me up. Red. Sixty-five yesterday, tied her career low. Two hundred one career low, fifty-four. So a solid week so far for her. Three career top tens. Yeah. Hood or no hood? I think you hood it just to help. But like hood to get the number, not hood. Yeah, yeah, you don't need to turn it. And but like almost up to the left edge of the grandstand, do you like? Right? Um, yeah. Start there? Yeah, I mean, I like... Yeah, I like that. More left or more right, do you think? No, I think there's first. Okay, All right. start. Yeah. All right, soft hand. Yeah. Get into it, yeah? It's got an eight iron out. 149. It is into the wind, and ideally, uh, you want to try and keep this one down just a little bit and play a little bit left of that flag. Oh. Comes up a little short, and it is left, as Karen said. Safe shot. Up his tall on the golf course, seven birdies only on this hole today. All right, Lynn Grant will be next here. And you right, Jim, ball is above her feet here. And so you do have to make a little bit of adjustment on it. So 139 is the yardage. And I still believe that left of this flag is the play. If you're a little bit short and a little bit right, the, with this plane into the wind and, you know, any kind of spin on it, it you could be in trouble. Yeah. It's safe play there, comes up about 25 feet short, just left of the whole location, both players. Sometimes par is a good score. All right, Minji Lee now, her third shot at the par 4 11th. Uh, yeah, this is a uh, degree of difficulty on a scale of 1 to 10. I'd put it at about a 9. The lie is also, it's kind of, there's, uh, you would prefer it to be a, a little more grassy than it is. It's, it's a little bare. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. You could easily do that out of that lie, trying to throw it up. Yeah. A lot of traffic going through there, so she's got her hands full here. Coming up with her fourth shot. Big mistake at the 11th, but Lynn Grant with a four-shot lead. Back at the ninth, Stephanie Kiriakou for birdie here. And from the front of the screen, it is uphill towards the hole, and everything on this green kind of wants to move to the right as well. So expect that movement on this putt. Yeah, we're so slow. Gabby Lopez's second shot. Defending champion here this week. Having a nice week, having a nice shot there at the 12th. All right, Lynn Grant now for a birdie. 
Well, she would have a good idea on the, on the kind of speed from watching Steph's putt. I think that chip in the last hole definitely will ease the tension. Absolutely. So there's the leaderboard right behind her, so she'll know, or her caddy will know where she stands. All right. The chip in changed the way everything happened. Everything kind of was speeding up, now slowed down. Let's take a look at this reaction. She's staring at down. Oh, I just barely missed that one. All right, fifth shot for Minji Lee at 11. Yeah, that's right. That's her fifth. She chipped it past the hole just off the green. Big time mistake with the second shot. She'll make double bogey and that kind of run. Rally is coming to a halt here. Didn't expect that. Well, that was almost shocking, mm. Jim, to miss it that far long and left on this hole. Yeah, she had made a bogey all. Well, she still had made a bogey with that double. All right, Lopez for birdie now. Just break a touch right to left here. Got to go. She'll stay at one under on the round today. 11 under total. All right, back over to the 10th. Castron now for birdie. You know, Morgan, you had slow greens yesterday. You got the faster, seems a little bit faster today. And they're not fast, but, you know, the players have had to make that adjustment. What are some of the keys you had when you had to make that adjustment coming into a greens that were so much slower with all the, the damp and the shit like, like yesterday? Just spend a lot of time on the putting green before the round. Really try and key in. You know, players yesterday had to do that twice. They had to go mm. out before the round and then had to go out before the restart after all the rain that fell in the morning. Lynn Grant said she was struggling a little bit there. The rain delay came in. She went out on the range and found something on the range, not the putting green, but on the range and found some, something in her golf swing. It paid off, but Castro comes up just a little short. Now we're back at the tee here. Looks like Lynn Grant has less than driver. Yeah, this is what she's been doing uh, all week. Uh, no need for a driver for Lynn here. She does hit the ball a long way, and there's a, a bunker down the, the right side that would be very much in range for her should she hit the driver. The wind today off the right, so this will accentuate her draw. And that should be just fine. Yep, that'll work. All right, Lindy Duncan for birdie here. She has not made a bogey. The only player on the golf course without a bogey. Of course, player college golf at Duke. All-American there. Five under on her, her round today. Correct that. There's two other players without a bogey. Wow, power lip. So he gave that a good run. She'll stay at 14 under, five shots back. She actually has a bogey. All right, Kiriaku, now it's the 10th. Also choosing not to use the driver here. She's pretty long off the tee too, so this isn't a surprise to see this play. So it also looks like a good strike here. Yeah, maybe a little bit of a pop-up short and right, a little steep on it, but that'll be just fine. All right, Maria Fassi now for birdie. Depends what comes out of this fringe here, first cut. Yeah, nicely. Ha <laughs> ha. Back to Maria. back. Maria. They're fired up. Look at that scorecard, Jim. There's wow. a lot going on. A couple pars in there. 
She will end now. It's for birdie at the 13th. I feel like you make birdie on this whole short par four. And she does. Nice putt. Stuck it in that right side. Birdie's 11 and 13. All right, Allison Corpus second shot here. Trips now with this group. Indeed, 167, right where you would expect her to be in the middle of the fairway. Uh-huh, this looks pretty good. I'd say. All right, good chance for birdie for Allison. She's now six shots back of Lynn Grant. One under on her round, 19 under par. We're at the Dana Open, final round. All right, we're back at the 10th. Stephanie Kiriakou's second shot. Found herself on quite a, a good downhill lie. 155 left. And really, you know, you're feeling a little bit sheltered here on this fairway. Uh, there were some big trees to, to her right, but the wind is up there, and it is really howling right now. Wow. Right through the wind there. That's a big mistake. Just hit it too solid, I assume. Plan for well, a lot I, more wind. I think, Jim, off that downhill lie, the trajectory was low enough that it didn't really get above that tree line. So the wind didn't fully hit it. All right, Lynn Grant now. From only 131. Uh, so you expect this ball to go quite a bit higher than the Stephanie shot. Flag on the front, wind off the right. She also tried to keep this one down, this is to the right. Yeah, it came straight out of that one. That was not a, a great shot. No, <laughs> not by any means. It does sit up a decent amount, but big mistake there. All right, Corpus for birdie now at 11. Yeah, this one's not hard to read. A little bit of movement right, but don't have to worry about the speed. Well, you can tell by the crowd's reaction. She made it. She gets the 14. Under par. A couple birdies on around. All right, Minji Lee second now at 12. Thirty feet. She'll have that for birdie. All right, over to the thirteenth. Aditya shook second shot, ten under par total. Definitely a hole, like you said, Jim, where you're looking, you know, wedging your hand, looking to make birdie. The location tucked over that bunker, but still very accessible. Second easiest hole on the golf course today. Yeah, a little bit downwind. All right, we're back over to the 10th. Lynn Grant now with uh, her third shot. Well, and you know what happens when people walk off the green. The grass will grow in the direction that they walk off the green, and this is where everybody exits this hole. So the grass is growing into her. And the bonus is that she has a lot of green to use. And she could even land it on this bit of a downslope, you know, a couple of steps on the green uh, with a lower trajectory and get it to release to the hole if she wishes. The, the trouble is that when you're hitting into the grass like this, that the ball actually wants to ride up the face a little bit more. So it's very hard to hit the low shot when you're hitting into the grass into the grain that the grass is growing. Much easier if you're down grain. One of the reasons why as well, you have to feel like you, you've got to keep that club moving really quickly through this as well. It needs to be an aggressive chip. Looks like club selection is probably a key to this shot as well. 
the benefit here is that it is downhill, Karen. The tendency would be for it to come out a little bit fluffy. I agree with that, as the fluffiness comes from the, the ball riding up that face. Just a fraction fluffy, but still took the downslope. Close, she'll have a chance to save par there. All right, Minji the Lee for birdie now at 12. This would be quite the bounce back right here. Tried to turn back to the left, but did quite. Got it out a little bit too far. She'll stay at 13 under par. All right, Lindy Duncan's second shot here at the 16th downhill. Location on that front portion of the green. Excellent play. Good chance for Birdie here for Lindy. Big week for her. All right, Kiriakou for Birdie here. Long putt for Birdie here at 10. Long and downhill. Sorry, I just had to have a little sneeze there. There's a <laughs> there's a lot of stuff blowing around in the atmosphere out here today. Well, God bless you then. Oh, thank you. A little bit of a uh, little bit of smoke and a little pollen and so downhill, very speedy. That's gotta go. A little tentative because of the downhill. She'll have about seven, eight feet left for par. All right, Aditya shook for birdie here at 13, just to get the minus 11. That comes up short. Sometimes these downhillers maybe this week aren't as quite as fast as some of the players maybe remember. All right, Lynn Grant now for par here at 10. The feeling in your feet is going to be that it's head and left, but the hole looks to be tilted a little bit to the right, so I'm not sure that this is going to break as much as you think. Center, nice putt, great save. Stake with the iron play, but big time save. Yeah, that was really, really clutch. Mm -hmm. Looking to win a golf tournament with a big lead. That is a way to keep the streak going. All right, Allison Corpus, second shot at 12. Well, yeah, again, she doesn't miss many sprinkler lines, does she? Not too many. <laughs> 165, Jim, downwind. And this is a seven iron. She can hit this. Just cannot go past this flag. Just left of it. Just not bad there. Pretty big first kick, but she'll have a good chance for birdie at 12 here. All right, Kiriakou for par here now at 10. Just trip just a fraction to her right here a little bit down the hill Jim yeah. good read by both of you nicely done so she'll save par there birdie the first hole but just a streak of par since then it stays at 13 under six back all right Lindy Duncan this for birdie at 16 just to get to minus 15 Power lifted on the last hole, but she doesn't there. And it's set right in the middle. Nice birdie. Pretty solid back nine. Back over at the 11th tee. Lynn Grant will be first to play. 
completely blind tee shot. And Morgan, you and I were saying that you really pick out a, a tree in the distance. And it used to form a W a while ago, but everything's kind of grown out a little bit and our lines have changed slightly. But these players would have picked out a good spot to hit this. Out of bounds to the right. But also, right half of the fairway is a, a really good side to come into this green from. This is a lovely high draw to the right half of the fairway. I just love her effortless power. It's just such a beautiful, flowing, rhythmic golf swing. All right, Kiriaku will be next. Lower trajectory, but find the fairway. Usually a good sign when they grab the tee, and that has really got some roll. Beautiful shot there, right in the middle. That'll be just fine, but Lynn Grant with a four-shot lead, one under on her round today at the Dana Open. Island Meadows Golf Club. We're back at the final round of the Dana Open. Who's now for birdie at 12? Now, I said you didn't want to get past this whole gym, but I'll stand corrected. This is a pretty flat putt. Um, breaking to the right. I've got it about two cups out of the line on the left. She had it about five or six cups out there. Really slow putt. She'll have that left for par. I think that tricked her. Back over to the 11th. Remember Lynn Grant here in the fairway here off the tee. But yesterday, we got to take a look at that again. Some eight iron coming in there. That whole location on the front portion of the green. Starting on a good line. Pass the hole, count it. Everybody's excited. <laughs> that really got our eyes open. Got out a 59 watch, kind of got that momentum going for her, or continuing that momentum. She didn't need any help. She had plenty of it. Wonderful 62 for her yesterday. Bogey at 16, but other than that, pretty flawless. All right, now our second shot. Got a nine iron out today. 149 to the hole. Wind off the right. I think as a player, you, you have great memories of what you did. When you walk up to the to this shot, quite Absolutely. a similar hole location. Can we have a similar shot? Pretty good, though. <laughs> Almost a letdown after yesterday. Great shot normally. Another chance for birdie. All right, Kiriaku now, her second shot. Three yards closer, 146. Also going with the 9-iron. Nine -nine. She actually has a slight downhill lie. Not a massive one, but just enough to keep the trajectory down just a bit. You can see it catching a little bit of a wind gust there. There are those big trees on the right that really would block the wind. Yeah, that's, well, that's the worry. As you stand there on the fairway, you know the wind should be coming from the right. It should be blocked. But if you catch a little gust coming back into you, it makes you really second guess that you have the right club. Especially given that she hit one that powered through the wind on the previous hole. Trying to tug that and went through there, but that's all right. Got part of the green, came back just enough. Par 3, 14th, Gabby Lopez for birdie. Ah, oh, she needs a 
left it short on the hole before, two holes before, but it blows that one by. Got to go ahead and give it a run. Lynn Grant with a four-shot lead over Lindy Duncan, who's having a great day at six under par. Nelson Corpus, two under on her round, 14 under. Minji Lee had it going, made double at 11. Zaganda was 65. That's a solid round, six under par. Dana Open, Sylvania Open. Four-shot lead for Lynn Grant. It's a beautiful summer day in northern Ohio as the Midwest plays host to the Midway Stop of the 2023 LPGA Tour season. Welcome to final round coverage of the Dana Open at Highland Meadows Golf Club in Sylvania, Ohio. Coming off a career low round of 62 yesterday, 24-year-old Swede and rising star Lynn Grant began the day with a six-shot lead but a much calmer start. After a series of pars, she holds this one at eight for birdie to hold a four-shot advantage over a group of contenders that include a couple of major champions. Two holes later, she would be tested. Her lead back to five, she faced a meaty par putt and stood up to the challenge. So here's how things stand. Duke University product Lindy Duncan is putting up one of the best rounds of the day with a couple of par fives remaining in her round. Two-time major champion Minji Lee and freshly minted U.S. Women's Open champion Allison Corpus are also in the hunt. But all the talk right now is about this Swede. Join us for the next two hours to see what the hype is all about. CBS Sports and the LPGA Tour bring you the final round of the Dana Open, part of the season-long race to the CME Globe. We're just a stone's throw from the Michigan border. Less than 20 minutes from the shores of Lake Erie, it is great to be in the Buckeye State. Synonymous with world-class golf, home to the great Jack Nicklaus, storied venues like Inverness, Muirfield Village, NCR, and Firestone. This place, Highland Meadows Golf Club, has its own distinction as an LPGA Tour staple. Hosting its 34th consecutive Dana Open, that trophy will be handed out in just a short time from now. Great to be along for this Sunday ride. Glad to have you with us. Our team consists of a pair of major champions as well in Morgan Pressel and Karen Stupples, five-time PGA Tour winner Jim Gallagher Jr. and PGA Tour veteran Trip Eisenhower. It has been the Lynn Grant show for the last couple of days as we take a look at another sizable putt. This one for birdie, though, not par. Ah, she made a really clutch putt on the last hole, Kelly, to save par. Another really good-looking stroke there. Opposite round of yesterday when she lit it up beginning and calmed in the end. Now Fossey at the 12th for birdie. Maria Fossi, you may remember her from her days at Augusta National when she finished rudder-up at the Anwa. To Jennifer Cupcho, this has been an erratic round of golf. Lots of circles and squares on that card. And now we say hello to Karen Stupples. Well, hello, Kelly. Absolutely <sighs> glorious golf that I've been watching here today from Lynn and yesterday as well. Weather conditions are quite windy out here, so it's a bit tricky for these players, but she pummeled that one down the fairway. Over to 13. Alistair oh, Krapu's second shot. Trip Eisenhower's with this group. 119. Straight downwind. Well, this is all over it. Looks good. Looks great. Straight downwind. Did not quite have the spin, but great chance for birdie. Back one to 12. And this is the tee shot of Stephanie Kiriakou. This whole downwind, ideally keep it a little bit down the left side as... Stephanie has done, opens up that right flag. 22-year-old native of Sydney, Australia. At the 17th, third shot for Lindy Duncan. Six under on her round today. Made a bogey earlier in the round, but has rallied here now. Just five back. Eh, not her best effort. All right, Kelly. 
Jim, thank you so much. What a beautiful day. And we have an outstanding leaderboard as well as I am joined by Morgan Pressel here in the booth. Two times a runner-up finish for you here in the Dana Open and your storied history in this championship. But the day right now belongs to Lynn Grant, just 24 years old. And there is a lot of hype surrounding the talent and the power in this young woman's game. Is she up to this challenge today? Do you think she's ready? Yeah, she's been very impressive to watch in her start. Now that we get to watch her full time in the United States so far this week, been truly flawless. It's been impressive to watch. We had a 59 watch for a short while yesterday towards the end of her round. She won the Scandinavian mix last year by nine shots. It's never easy to play with a big lead, but she knows how to do it and has gotten the job done in the past. She needs to draw off of that experience out on this golf course today. She needs to put blinders on because there are plenty of players out there trying to chase her down with no expectations on them, just out there to make some birdies. The golf course is soft and is for the taking. But Lynn, I do believe, is up to the challenge. And that birdie on 11 might have just been enough to seal the deal. She just needs to keep up with her game plan, and her chasers will eventually run out of holes. What she's trying to avoid is chaos. The people who are pushing from behind are hoping to provoke a little chaos. Who is best up to that challenge? Well, we've seen some. I mean, Allison Corpu is the winner last, last week at Pebble Beach, coming off of her first victory ever, one of the biggest events, arguably, in the women's game. Uh, she is right there, neck and neck. We thought Minji was maybe going to make a push for a bit, ended up with a double on 11. That might have really hurt her chances. But the thing about this golf course is it does end with two par fives. So there is some drama waiting to be had at the end of the round. We'll see what happens. Same thing at Baltusrol, but you don't see it that often. A couple of closing par fives, which certainly leaves tons of room for an electric finish. Let's go to the 17th now. Yeah, the first of the two par fives finishing hole. Duncan now for birdie. Got to go. I wonder her best wedge shot coming in there, but she'll make par at the par five. She'll stay six under on the round, 15 under. Really good week for her. All right, second shot, the 15th for Gabby Lopez. The location's on the front right portion. They've had it on the right side of the green three different times. I think she can go ahead and fly this one on. A little bit of a green comes back for the first couple steps on. All right, that gets to pin high. As Kelly said, I've played here many, many times. I love this golf course, Highland Meadows. It's really a, an old school design. Got to hit fairways, got to hit greens. It's in wonderful shape. Uh, the team yesterday worked so hard to get this golf course playable after a four hour rain delay. The entire golf course was underwater. So shout out to Greg Patson and his team for all the hard work they have put in this week. The golf course is just in wonderful shape, especially considering everything that we've had to deal with. Now Lynn Grant is a five time Ladies European Tour winner. They've all come since 2022. Four in that season, won this one. And this young lady right here, Stephanie Kiriakou, is a two time LET winner. Still very young, but certainly has some victorious moments to draw from. Oh, yeah. You do? Yeah. If there's anything like the other two holes, I mean, yeah. that 9 iron carried 132. So. Well, okay. Put it this way. If it's normal, it's like 1.15. It's just that the hole's not too much. 16, that's too much. So, about 10 minutes ago. Oh, right. Yeah. Like a bit longer. Yeah. Okay, 08. Sarah, and that ball just up against that first cut, is that going to play it all into her swing here? No, I had a good look at the lie. It's not too bad at all. Sometimes it can slow the heel down and can leave the shot hanging out to the right a little bit, but it didn't look to be that bad to me. Beautifully handled. Well, that was a good discussion between those two. A lengthy one, but certainly productive. Krapoos for birdie here at 13 trip. Yeah, I can't let this one get away. This is a really easy putt. Oh. Big miss. Back to 12. And a great look for Lynn Grant. Just a gap wedge for her. It is quite heavily downwind, though. Something to keep in mind as we go through the day. Both these players use meters, not yards, when they're talking to their caddies. 
what she needs to continue to do. English on that. Yeah. Fairways and greens. Another beautiful couple swings. It's the Lynn Grant show at the moment. The Dana Open is sponsored by Toledo, Ohio. More than you ever imagined. Plan your trip at visittoledo.org. Well, just moments ago, Lynn Grant reached the mark of 20 under at the Dana Open, now looking to go even deeper. This is not an easy putt, though, from here. Um, this wind is, uh, the, the green is getting a little, little bit hit by wind. You can see her backing off there just as a gust hit her. But this whole location is in this back right portion of the green. There's a tendency for this ball to go left. Well, she's human. Ah, that was a good looking roll. Tried to peek in on the high side, good stroke. She was just a touch tentative on the front nine, missed some shorter birdie opportunities. But really that one on 11, the chip in on eight, and then the putt on 11 have really settled her down. Morgan here with Allison Corpus, our top tracer technology is gonna show us the path. That's a six iron. I don't see the tracer, but I can tell you it's tracing at the flag. <laughs> yeah, very well done. Just pass pin high and she'll have a nice roll at it. And back to the 12th and a short birdie putt here for Kiriaku. And just trying to keep pace with, with Lynn a little bit. And I think all these players that were, were chasing Lynn at the start of the day knew that they had their work cut out for them. Well, you need two things to happen, don't you, Morgan? You need to have a day, and you need to hope that the leader does not. And so far, none of those scenarios are really coming to fruition. Now, these chasers are going to need a little bit of help from Lynn coming down the stretch in order, in order to get the job done. They're all inspired, though, by Gabby Lopez coming from behind last year, Jim. Yeah, Gabby Lopez now for birdie to get to minus 12. I thought the win may be a factor maybe kind of bunch up the leaderboard, but Lynn Grant's played well. Nice putt by Le Gabby there to get uh, 12 under par. Well, let's take you back to Saturday. It was a rainy one here, nearly a four hour weather delay because of so much rain falling. This was before the delay kicked in. Woo! Lynn Grant donned in black, but lighting up with red scores. That was a birdie. And then there would be that big delay. She would have a change of clothes, come back dry, and go into attack mode. That was a hole out eagle at the 11th. She was nine under Morgan through 13 holes in this round. So deep that at one point, a spectator said to her, do you think you have the 59 in you? And it woke her up. She started playing more protectively after a series of early highlights like this. Yeah, she said she got a little bit nervous there. You see, she made a couple shaky swings, the iron into 16, but still, uh, we can't be too picky. What a round of golf, just tremendous. Yeah, she opened with a 64, which was her career low on the LPGA until that 62. And today she's doing exactly what needs to be done, remaining unflappable. Had a critical par save earlier in the round that we showed to you. A couple of nice birdies of late and perched up here with a five shot lead. Stephanie Kiriakou will be first on the tee here. A little downwind today, Karen. It is, and uh, from the angle that the players are playing out to the fairway, there's a little bit from the right as well. I think this is a this whole gym is is a birdie opportunity, uh, but you've really got to take advantage of hitting the fairway. The, the bunkers down the left loom pretty large. So a lot of players will just leave it hanging out to the right. Second easiest hole today. Job number one is get it in the fairway. She does just that. That'll be just fine. All right, Lynn Grant's hit driver here every day, but looks like she's gonna hit fairway wood today. I think the reason for that is just the amount of wind that is pushing this golf ball down the fairway. She, she gets very close to this green. 
And I think for her, having a fuller shot into a left hole location is going to be more of an advantage. Downwind with a full shot, you can actually control the spin more as opposed to being too deep in the fairway and having that awkward kind of yardage where you've got to hit a small shot over a bunker and not knowing about the spin. Yeah, and that'll be just fine as well. Players find the fairway. Let's go up uh, to 14. And this is a woman who has not had much sleep, Morgan, since she won the U.S. Women's Open just a few days ago. Just an absolute whirlwind for her. Life changing. Says she wakes up in the morning and says, wow, I'm a major champion. But and like John Rahm to... went to Hilton Head to honor his commitment, she is doing the same thing here at the Dana Open and putting on a show of her own. All right, Maria Fossi now for birdie at 13. Birdie at 12, so she get back to back. Uh, Maria's parents flew in this morning to surprise her, to watch her today. Also had some friends fly in from Arkansas. Has quite the cheering crowd out there. Just a very, very fun player to watch. Tuesday night at 10 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. Don't miss a WNBA thriller as Eastern Conference Player of the Month, Alyssa Thomas and the Sun take on the Phoenix Mercury. Be sure to catch that Tuesday, 10 Eastern. As we go back to 13. All right, Lynn Grant's second shot now at the par four. This whole location today is really tucked quite tight behind that bunker and you don't really want to get too cute with this it's been downwind so I think you just have to accept the fact you're going to try and land it pretty close to that flag and if it releases a little bit then that's just fine too this is going to be a sandwich for her and, and downwind it is still going to be tough to get it to to get any kind of backspin on it I mean it might just drop and stop with a good strike. Stop. Mm. And it might drop if it keeps going backwards. <laughs> oh, what a great shot. Dialing it in nicely again. She has been spot on this week. Okay. Kiriaku now second shot. Yeah, straight at it. And I think really smart, smart course management by both these players. Yeah, yeah. You good? Yeah. yeah. Steph also with a sandwich. Right, reset, yeah? Giving themselves a fuller shot in here. You see her caddy, Wei Wang. They're, he's, he's been on her bag for about a year now. They have a great relationship. They're a lot of fun. He said to me on the range today, he goes, don't, just don't mic us up. <laughs> <laughs> they could almost have their own reality show. Another good looking shot. It went. They asked it for it to go and it did. It has that chance for birdie. Yeah, it's a tough request these days not to be mic'd up because there are microphones everywhere. And cameras is something this young woman better get used to. Everybody talking about her big buzz surrounding her and she's trying to join this list. Our insights by KPMG show us first time winners this season. The big asterisk here, Morgan, is that three of them are also major champions. Uh, really tremendous. Uh, it wasn't Lilia's first victory on tour at the major, the Chevron. She had won a few about a month earlier at in Thailand, but just the new fresh faces of women's golf just coming to play in the biggest of events this year. It's been fun to watch. Rose Zhang winning in her LPJ Tour debut, the star-studded amateur career that she had followed immediately with an exclamation point. And a win in the shadows of New York City. Aditya Shook with a long-range putt here. Count it. Right of India. Climbing deeper into the red. Let's catch up with Maria Fossey here at the 14th. 
She's talked a lot about really trying to be patient, sticking to her game plan, taking the opportunities when she can get them. That was well done there. The winds are blowing, but the players are handling it well. Trip back with Allison Corpus. And this man can fool you in a lot of places of this golf course, but right now you've really feel it. And it is the direction the compass says, so it shouldn't be a mystery. And I tell you what, she has hit every single iron right on the button. This is an eight iron from 150 down out of the left. She's only missed two greens so far today. It's a little reminiscent of what we saw last yeah. Sunday. Another. <laughs> yeah, she's liking Sundays in July, isn't she? Another beauty right there. All right, Kiriaku for birdie now at 13. Yeah, the thought Jim from here, it's got to go left. But the wind is on her back. Oh. Oh, that's a good read there, Karen. Not by her, but by you. Lack a little speed. She'll stay at 14 under. Bogey free today. Hadn't made a bogey since I think the level four yesterday. So pretty consistent play. All right, Lynn Grant now for birdie. I don't see anything in this one, Jim. Um, There's quite gusty wind into her. And so just have to be aware that the wind is there and try and keep a smooth stroke. Few weeks ago at KPMG, she said that she still feels like a rookie out here, even though she is in her second season and she's out here to prove herself and say she's making pretty good work of that right here this week. She's proven to everybody, including herself, that she is someone to be watching for, especially this week with a six shot lead now. And the 14th, Maria Fossey eyeing a birdie opportunity. Look at her scorecard, Kelly. She's only had three pars today. It's just been a wild day, but only an even par. And that'll be the fourth one, unfortunately. Well, you'll look for her name more on leaderboards in the back half of the season. The majority of her five top tens in her runs on LPJ Tour leaderboards have come after the month of June, July. She says she's not as comfortable on California courses, Western courses, and really tends to start playing better once the season moves a little further east. Well, Lynn Grant doing some quick math here, trying to put up another birdie. She played alongside Allison Corpus yesterday, and this is what Corpus said about her good friend. They played a lot of college golf against each other, one at Arizona State, the other one in California. Lynn absolutely lit it up today, talking about her 62. I'm hoping the best for her tomorrow. I mean, no one's going to catch up if she plays the way she did today. Allison Corpus was so rock steady down the stretch at Pebble Beach, winning her first major just seven days ago. She looked unflappable on the closing holes in the closing round. You could say a lot about this woman today, just cruising along at a very evenly paced speed, also looking unflappable. Great respect between these two, Morgan. Yeah, just wonderful sportsmanship. I mean, anytime, you know, as a player, you always hope that that is your day, but it's still impressive and inspiring to see it from the player that you're playing against. And she looks unflappable right now, Karen. Well, I think she's... Uh weathered a few storms early in the round. I think it's very easy to be nervous at the start of the day and especially with such a big lead. I mean, it's it's something that is, you know, a little bit uncomfortable to be honest. I mean, it's a nice spot to be in, but uncomfortable. And this is a six iron. That's right. And that one 
certainly not her best. Not the end of the world from there. We've got some wet sand after all the rain that fell on this golf course. We'll see how she handles that one. All right, Allison Corpus for birdie now at 15 trip. And Jim, I just got to tell you how good that shot was. It, it was downwind. She hit a little three quarter eight iron, and most players downwind would throw it way up into the downwind. She flighted that ball down, landed it right on the front. It tells me she's in full control of her game. And the reward for that is a putt that's pretty straight. I think you might have to factor the wind out of her right to move it a touch left, if anything. I feel like we keep waiting to see some fatigue from her trip, but there's been no sign of that whatsoever. No fatigue in that stroke. Last eight rounds have all been under par, and it's going that direction today. Nice putt at the 15th. Grant with a five shot lead. The day in open. We are back at the 18th uh, par five finishing hole and Lindy Duncan has a birdie chance to get to 16 under. And it's looking like a par for her, which would match her season low effort so far of 65, which just came just two days ago. Now at the 14th, Lynn Grant after missing her approach wide right has this. Can be aggressive here. That Firm wet sand into the wind, but that was, I think, a little clean, Morgan. Yeah, just with the wet sand, wasn't able to get as much underneath it. Took a really big swing there for a short shot. And now Lady Duncan hoping to clean up this round of six under par if she knocks this in. Good for her first top 10, Morgan, in nearly a year. This could be huge for her as well. Really help her reshuffle up for the latter part of the season, get into more events. This is only her fifth start this season. And you see 265s. Well done, Lindy. All right, Kiriaku now for birdie at uh, 15th. 14th, excuse me. And trying to get one closer to Lynn Grant with a comfortable five shot lead. Well, this part is going to move from the right because of the way the green slopes and the start of the green. Oh, oh, that's cruel. That was a good looking roll. And when you're really trying to get something going to put some pressure on Lynn, who is has a lengthy putt here for par. Look at this. Oh, so frustrating. In this group, a combined 46 years old, 22 year old Stephanie and 24 year old Lynn. All right, she you Lynn now for birdie at 17. This is to get the 13 under. She does just that. Three birdies on the back nine, so a chance for another one at 18. Well, she has been knocking on the door so much this season, Jim. She sure has. In in regular events and in majors, uh, Lynn Grant. Really hasn't made a huge splash in her LPG Tour career to date, but it is very young, just her 15th start. And now poised for victory if she can hang in there. Yeah, I mean, she had a, a remarkable year last year, you know, regaining, you know, keeping her status by only being able to play six tournaments. And, you know, it just shows the level of talent that she has. Not to be here on this, this hole, though, but... You know, it's, it's hard to keep that focus going on every single shot when you have such a big lead, Morgan. Yeah, she was kept out of the United States due to vaccination regulations for non-citizens, non-residents, and, and wasn't able to come play in the United States at all last year. Kept her card by only playing the international LPGA events of which she was eligible. It really is just a, was a dramatic performance last year, but she said that being forced to play more on the L.E.T. helped her learn to win. Finding positives in negatives, that's the stuff of champions. And it seems as if we're looking at a champion being groomed as we speak. Now Corpus, who has been basking in the glory of this U.S. Women's Open victory, sizing up this shot. 
162 is the number to the hole. it would definitely have to deal with that. I think she's got to go left of it. This is a six iron. And the good news is. The lie is sitting up, so she went one higher. She went to seven. I like getting it up in the air more. Uh, but I think she's got to cut this, Morgan. And I'm sure you've had this issue with this tree to this hole location before. Uh, we all have at some point out here, but <laughs> she had a beauty yesterday from the fairway, cut it a long way around towards the back hole location. The front hole location brings the tree a little bit more into play, but the wind should be helping her, even though it's tough to get the ball to move too much left to right out of the rough. She went under the tree. I was shocked by that, but. Probably a bit of a push, not exactly what she was intending, but it's going to be okay. Chipping up the hill, potentially could get a putter on it. It's Stephanie Kiriakou here at the 15th. Well, with the bunkers down the left, you've really got to try and keep this one down the right side of the fairway. Wind will push it to the right. That'll do. Yeah, well, hang on. Oh, she's going to be standing in the bunker. Uh, That's going to be awkward. Yesterday, Karen, she said she got to 13, started, you know, thinking about the round she was having, got things speeding up, kind of went on a little bit more conservative. Now just made bogey at 14. Well, I, I think, Jim, like in, in any any course of the round, I mean, you have a general feeling for where you are, but within the round and knowing that you have a really big lead, it's very easy to kind of in the middle of the round, get a bit coasty. You've made a few birdies. It's, you know, you know, you're, you're not in too much trouble. Uh, it's just a question of regrouping and refocusing a lot of the time and just staying in the moment. It's really hard to do the closer you get to the finishing line. She's got that in the fairway. She's only missed two of those today, so that's job number one here. But she's got a four-shot lead as they head down the 15th fairway at the Dana Open. Back with Allison Corpus, the closest to Lynn Grant in scoring. Here she is at 16. Man, I have any chance. This is a must up and in. Oh my, sit down. She's going to make it interesting. Yeah, she just released her right hand a little bit on that one. Well, tonight on CBS begins with 60 minutes and the amazing advancements in prosthetics, followed by a new tough as nails, plus the equalizer and NCIS Los Angeles. That is tonight on CBS. We have our own drama here. As Corpus is inched a little closer, Grant dropping a shot just a hole ago, and now Matilda Castron at the 15th. Yep, that's for the birdie. Got to go. It does. Even Maria Fossi tried to help it in there. A couple bogeys at 12 and 13. Nice comeback at the 15th. Gets her back to 10 under par. All right, Gabby Lopez at 17. This is for pars. Had some issues on this hole. Had it in the bunker there. Kind of chunked it out to here. A little bit of a roll early on this time, but just hadn't made enough putts. She's our defending champion. Nice job defending this week. And good look at that hole location today on 17. Tucked in the back left. With as wet as the conditions are, I'm not sure if we will see too many people get close to this green. Oh, oh there you the go. Putt. That's what you're supposed to do with your defending champions. She'll stay at 12 under. She's tied for six right now. Do a little fist pump. Got a chance at the last hole. Maybe a birdie or eagle. We'll see. All right, back at 15. Lynn Grant's second shot. It's from 134, and the 17th green isn't too far away from where we are here on the 15th. So that made a nice little sound over here. This is a wedge for Lynn. Ooh, another shot to the right. She's lost. She lost one right at six earlier. She lost one on the last hole and now with just a wedge. Big mistake right there. That was a 
little bit of the wind. Both of those shots not really playing enough for that crosswind, Jim. Ooh. Morgan. really awkward here for Steph. Ball well above her feet. And so you have to grip all the way down, almost onto the onto the metal of the shaft. Yun. It's going to go low and left really quick. Well, because the, absolutely, because the heel will, can, will dig in. You've got to try and you know, make sure that you keep that club face square as long as you can through the ball. And I think you just have to really club up. I mean, because it, it, it's not going to travel any distance. And I think you have to try and run this along the ground. Try and play a bit of a running shot. Get it to run as much as you can. I really want to avoid that front left bunker. I want to aim well right here. That takes some strength and some power right there to get through shot. there. What a good looking shot. That is so hard to keep your balance. You did a great job with that just to get it onto the green. So well played. That's not going to be the easiest two putt in the world, but I, I was not. I did not see getting this ball on the green that easily. Look at how far she's choked up on this club. Keeps her lower body really still. You've got two different mediums. One foot's in sand, one foot's on the grass. Plus. The change in elevation there, that was really impressive. Yeah, she clean, caught that clean. That was a big plus, too. The heel didn't dig, as Karen said. And now Corpus has a par putt at 16. Yeah, down the hill, not much break to have any chance. This is absolute must. Oh, she is still in a flow state for Pebble. Just remarkable, the golf she's playing. I almost don't want to wake up from the dream. It has a dreamlike feel to it. It's hard to wake up when you haven't gone to sleep. She said she's <laughs> on three hours of sleep after winning that night. All right, Aditya shook for birdie. This to get to minus 12. Get rid of the top 10 if she hit that hard enough. Ah, still has the 18th par five to play. Pretty solid back nine. Well, up the 18th, this is the third shot for Jarvi Boonchant, who shared the first round lead with Lynn Grant, opening with 64. Like Lindy Duncan, a Duke product and a stylish approach. Leona McGuire winning just three hours from here in Grand Rapids a few weeks ago, another Duke product. So they're having a nice run in the Midwest. They sure are. All right, Corpus now at 17. Watch that. Hers are usually going to the build the fairway. All right, Lid Grant with an awkward shot here. It is awkward. Um, severe upslope in front of that bunker. She has a really good lie, though. Um, this ball should pop up in the air really quite quickly. So I think giving it enough to get to the hole is going to be quite hard. She got some good tumble on it. Sure did. Well done. Four feet for par. Keep her at 20 under par with a four shot lead. All right, back over to 17, the par five. Benji Lee, her third shot now. Currently 11 under par. Made a double back at 11, kind of stopped the run she was on. Okay, good shot. Good chance for Birdie. She's tied for ninth right now. Get one more. Get, keep moving up that leaderboard. And here at the 18th, Birdie chance for Boone Chant. She lost eight shots yesterday to Lynn Grant Morgan, and that was the killer for her. Yeah, she's had a 
good week this week. When you look at the way she's played this year, she's coming off of four straight missed cuts. And golf is just such a funny game. You never know when the course is going to suit your eye, when you might find something. Just that little thing that will propel you towards the top of the leaderboard. She makes this most likely be her best finish of the season. Best finish so far. Tied for ninth. Kiriakou, long putt for par here at or birdie 15. Yeah, you couldn't really get a much longer putt than that, Jim. No, no. she still gets work left. Yeah, back into that wind was always going to be hard to get it there. She was happy to get it up there, but just uh, that crazy lie she had, she might still be away here. I think she is. I think that Stephanie's gained a lot of confidence this year playing for Team Australia at the International Crown. And you got to feel like playing in the final group today has some of those similar feelings, Karen. I think so too. And I, I think that a number of the, the Team Australia players, uh, you know, Sarah Kemp being another one, I mean, they, they had a chance to be close with Minji Lee. And, and, you know, and you watch somebody like Minji Lee go about her business and what she does it makes you realize you know what can be achieved and what needs to happen and, and how simple Minji makes it look and you kind of apply those same principles to your own game and all of a sudden it doesn't become quite so hard yeah, it's such an individual sport there's nothing like having that insight into one of the top players in the world in a team format like the international crown or a Solheim Cup it can be a really big learning experience for a lot of players. All right, Lynn Grant has this left now for par. So it's not an easy one. And it's just that awkward length. She made a really solid one on a, on 10, excuse me, for par. This one is huge right here, Karen. Sure is. Well, you know, because you know that you, you don't want to feel like things are getting away from you. You want to feel like you're still in control of, of your own narrative within your own head as much as anything. Oh, nice putt there. So good save, kind of a less than average wedge shot in there, but she'll stay at 20 or with a four shot lead. Uh, Lynn Grant looking poised, practically locked here to make the next Solheim Cup team representing Europe. Uh, Morgan, you were the assistant captain for Stacey Lewis. Uh, looking at this squad right here, this is going to be a tough one for the Americans. Oh, we know that. We know it's definitely going to be a tough team. So many players on this list have had wonderful seasons this year. You've got some fresh faces like Maya Stark and Lynn Grant, some experience in the players on the bottom of that list, Charlie Saganda, Anna Nordquist as well. And then a new addition to the American squad here, Allison Corpus. This is our second shot. Just a layup here, see if it stays in the fairway, and it does just that. Location on that left side. And now the second for Maria Fossey at the 16th. Oh, those winds definitely coming into play here. I seemed really baffled by that one. Supposed to be gusting upwards of 20 miles an hour this afternoon. All right, Minji Lee now for birdie to get to minus 12. In a tie for ninth. Back to 16. And Kiriakou set to play. Tough tee shot here with the wind on your back. You have a bunch of trouble down the right side. You've got to try and keep it down the left if you can. There is a bunker down there that will be in the player's mind as well on the left. Steph, Steph is a very confident young player. Look at that 
Beautiful, Beautiful drive. She said earlier this year, it might be a bit arrogant, but I feel like I'm going to win majors. It's only a matter of time. It's a good mentality to have. Call it arrogant, but most players want to think it and not say it. She has the guts to say it. Our top tracer technology tracking the ball flight of Lynn Grant. She's been very consistent with this club this week, Karen. She has, although I did see her hit one here a couple of days ago uh, that went quite a bit to the right, got a really good break out of the trees. And this one's going to be just fine, though. Tag that one down the fairway. Beautifully struck. She got a really fortunate break, and we looked at that at the time, saying, would this be the break that could potentially propel her, propel her towards her first victory? Up at the 18th, this is the approach to the par five from Shi Yu Lin, who has been banging on that proverbial door to victory, Morgan. A number of runner-up finishes and also contending in majors. When will it be her time? She is certainly patient in that department. Lynn Grant, a four-shot lead. We have two par fives to close out this tournament. This one far from over. Hey, Corpus's third shot here at the par five. Yeah, Jim, I liked her pushing it down here to 65 yards. Not the best of angles, but into the wind. Uh huh. Uh huh, is right. Gonna have to make at least two birdies, maybe even an eagle on the last hole to have a, put a little pressure on Grant. And at the 18th, chance for Shi Yu Lin to finish at 14 under par. That's a familiar sight. A woman from China recording yet another birdie in a round of 67 to close the week. Solid scoring. And a note for you, Special Ops Lioness, Taylor Sheridan's new spy thriller starring Zoe Zaldana, Nicole Kidman, and Morgan Freeman is streaming July 23rd exclusively on Paramount+. Plus. Back to the 16th where Maria Fossey did make her par just a few moments ago. We'll catch up with this group. Stephanie's got 142. She's got a nine iron out. And I think you just can't fight the wind here when it's on your back, Morgan. You said it earlier. You have to kind of use it. Let the wind take the ball to the hole. Nice. Couldn't walk out there and place it any better. That is putting right up the hill. Wonderful spot. She did. You can see she started the ball left, let the wind take it. Same thing here for Lynn, Karen. Yeah, she's got a wedge in her hand. And I think when I think about the, the rights, she, she has a big forward press and she plays the ball club back in her stance. I think just the hair ball position has been causing that right shot. But this one is catching a bit too much wind to the right. It's been Again. these shots. It's been these shots with the wind off the left where she has been struggling. When I saw her on the range earlier today, she said she was going to embrace the draw today, try and get it to move just a fraction left, but that has not been happening. She has been put, hitting some push fades with her irons. Well, on the positive side, look at the company she could be keeping if she emerges the winner this week. Rory McIlroy winning the Genesis Scottish Open. You saw it earlier on CBS with that electric finish upsetting the, the hometown favorite in McIntyre. And Nellie Corda, despite the troubles she's been having with her back of late, back in action, and a winner once again for the 13th time in her professional career around the world. So there's a lot of people talking about the talents, the power, and the potential of this young woman. Morgan, I had a chance, I know you did too, to talk to Annika Sorenstam about her. She says she thinks she has the potential to be a star. That's her word, a star. She has distance, a strong mind. She plays aggressively. She's enjoyed seeing her success and can't wait to see her in the winning circle on the LPGA. She didn't say if, but when. There's no question it's a when. And I, I asked her about the Scandinavian mix, which was an event that Annika hosts uh, in her home country, and of which Lynn won by nine last year. 
And she said that she just didn't look back. She kept charging, sticking to her game plan, is so solid and focused. We've seen some of that today. All right, Capoose for birdie now. Really straight putt, Jim. That gets her within three. Lynn Grant, a little bit of trouble back at the 16. Things might be getting just a little bit interesting here at the end. That same club that worked so well for her last Sunday, that clutch putter at it again. A couple of friends doing battle as we watch Grant here at the 16th. Pretty straightforward bunker shot there. Back uphill. Good lie. A series of testy par putts for her today, but so far she's been up to the challenge. You, you, you talk about the Scandinavian mix. You've referenced it a couple of times, Morgan. It is so important to note for those who are as close to the game. This is called mixed because it's a DP World Tour co-sanctioned event with the ladies European Tour. She played against the men from the European Tour and beat the field by nine shots to become the first women to win on the DP World Tour in history. And she beat the likes of Henrik Stenson and Mark Warren and a stout field. We had an exchange with Stenson this morning, and he called her play amazing and said he didn't actually physically meet her for the first time until the prize giving, but he was blown away by the performance that she put on. And I think we're seeing a similar record-setting performance here from her this week. It's just uh, really just been so impressive. And now Kiriakou just trying to keep pace. Just up the hill here for Stephanie. Not much in this one at all. And I think Morgan, she's been using this new putter quite well. It's the first new one she's had in her bag in 12 years. I, I was shocked when I heard that, Karen. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't somebody who changed putters frequently, maybe every couple of seasons, but 12 <laughs> years? I, I was. I would have gone through 12 putters in one year, so I was the opposite. <laughs> Somehow my putters always found the, the doghouse in, in my house. I feel like this one might stick around for a while. Well, I'm I with think you. So I, too. I had the same putter my entire career. It does have a few scuff marks on the face of it. It might have met a, an old school <laughs> metal spike back in the day, but it's still my baby. No, no, they were Go ahead. They were never my babies. <laughs> All right, important par putt for Grant. Absolutely. Uphill. She has remained very calm all went throughout the, the whole of today's round. Just the wind at her back maybe threw her yep. off just a fraction there doesn't look like her pacing in any fashion has changed. We haven't seen much emotion in her face, either positive or negative. Oh, nice. Just some really clutch putts, especially on the last two holes. So good. This is what the likes of Annika Sorenstam and Henrik Stenson are talking about, just how steely she is on the inside. Up at the 18th, this is the third for Aditi Ashuk. It's an interesting place to be coming from here for her third. Well, ball well below her feet. There's a little bit of a slope to the right. I think she was trying to use to get it close. Well, she was hoping to duplicate some of the magic she found in the second round on this hole. Watch this one from the greenside bunker. Perfectly dialed in. All smiles and rightly so. Playing with her, Gabby Lopez, the defending champion who came from five back last year to win the Dana. I think about her spectacular up and down here on the final hole. To win, she was about four groups ahead of the leaders and 
playing with Megan Kang. They both put up really low numbers, inspired each other. They fed off each other the entire day. Still a wonderful title defense. All right, back at 17th tee. Kiriakou looks like she'll be first, getting up on the right side of this tee. And Jim, for the first time this week, this is quite a favorable wind direction for these players on the 17th. Uh, wind is off the right, and this hole does dogleg round to the left, so you can start the ball down that right side and let it ride the wind and get a bit of extra distance too if you're hitting it with a draw and letting it ride that wind. Stephanie's just done that. That'll be just fine down that left side. Well placed. Just got a text from Missy Kay, who was Lynn Grant's coach at Arizona State, and she told me Lynn loves to win and doesn't let outside things bother her. She hasn't today. She only worries about the things that she can control. And right now it's she can control this driver with her length. She might be able to get there in two. She's birdied at the first and third day. She has a really high ball flight with that high draw. Definitely ride that wind. Yeah, she's done that. Kind of a soft kick, but that'll be just fine. But most likely a layup from there, though. 18. And this is Ashuk trying to connect for the birdie. Oh, yeah. That's a different way to get it done than she did a couple of days ago, but a lovely finish for Aditi Ashuk with a final round 69. All right, back on the tee, the U.S. Women's Open champion. And rarely misses a fairway would be really important here. It's downwind out of the left. I I think if she hits a good one, it, it's possible for her to get here. Not the longest player, though, Morgan. No, but uh, you don't need, especially with it being downwind, you don't need too much power to get there in two. I think she leads the tour in picking tees up quickly. In the speed at which she picks it up. She just is confident. She knows exactly where it's going. There's no reason to watch. Well, she needs to do something special here and hope that Lynn Grant does not on the closing par fives. An unlikely scenario as Lynn Grant is looking pretty cool at the moment, but we shall see. All right, second shot for Lynn Grant. She pushed it up close to the green yesterday, Karen. Yeah, she's got a long way to go to get today. 264 to the front, 282 to the hole. I think if you can, uh, with that back left hole location, you kind of want to give yourself a, a better angle or a more of a fuller shot. Now she's done that. Yep, she sure has. All right, Maria Fossi's third shot here out of the bunker. The green kind of goes away. Got to carry it probably just on. All set up nicely, carries it on nice. Oh, she nearly makes it. Well played. Back in the fairway. Yeah, you're going to get like five short, maybe. Yeah, but we're going to have to wait on the next tee anyway. I believe she's just going to wait. Fossey now for birdie. You know, you bother Maria while she's putting. All right, that gets Maria to 1300. She'll be in sixth place by herself, so definitely can make birdie or possibly even eagle at the 18th. The best finish of the season for her. All right, back at 17, Kiriakou now. Yeah, she had 250 to the front, and I think Steph hits it far enough to know that she could get this ball land in, you know, within 20 to, to 10 yards of the front of the green, and she just didn't want it to disturb the players on there. Oh, shit, actually. Stop it. <laughs> oh, 
Yeah, that's going to be an awkward shot from right there. Didn't quite catch all that. She's still all smiles. That's not bothering her. Do you hear, hear her caddy? He said, oopsies. <laughs> <laughs> I love the, the honesty between these two friends. Having a good time, keeping her loose. That's a big part of it out there. Where the caddy's trying to keep your player loose, thinking at the shot when it's time, but having some fun in between. Especially in big moments like this. She said coming into the day, she was both excited and nervous, which you're going to be being in this position in the final group on Sunday. Minji Lee working around the hole here to get the best look at this birdie opportunity. She had it to 15 under at one point in this round and was within a about four shots of Lynn Grant, but then suffered a painful double bogey at the 11th, and that was her undoing. It was really an uncharacteristic play for her. Missed the green way long left. She's such a solid iron player. That was kind of shocking, especially the way Minji had played to that point. So two more bogeys coming in, but that'll help the cause just a little bit. She'll definitely de be disappointed in her back nine, though, today. Great to see her back in a hunt, though. Her brother Min Wooley has been making a lot of noise on the PGA Tour of late. Well read, well executed. And just a solid player. Back to 17. Yeah, Lynn Grant right here. Let's take a look at some insights by KPMG today. Only missed two fairways, six greens, 24 total putts. She's made some crucial putts when she needed to. Ten. And a nice one at the par three. She's she's kind of hung in there. It's been not easy. It's never easy to win for the first time on the LPGA. You never know how you're going to do it. But she's been in control of her emotions. She's been the least solid with her ball striking that we've seen. It has been the toughest conditions with the wind. But when I mean, you look to yesterday's round where she had 17 out of 18 greens in regulation and looked like she could barely miss the flag stick. But there's a lot of pressure, Karen, playing with a big lead coming into the day with a six shot lead. There is because you you uh, you can kind of almost think, oh, I wish it was already done, you know, and, and think to yourself, you know, I wish I could just have the trophy in my hands already. But you know that you've got to fight and grind around another 18 holes of golf. And that, that's what's tough is that you know you've got to be up for the fight. You've got to be up for hitting quality shots, knowing that, that everybody's going to be chasing you down. The golf course is there to make birdies of. Playing this one back in her stance. You can use the slope of the green to the right of the flag. But that's what makes this young lady so impressive. She controls what, what she can control. She's done a great job of that. Nice shot in there. Good chance for birdie. And now the most recent major champion trying to make a final push. Yeah, 255 front back actually into a little bit of wind, just trying to get it up on the plateau. That's acceptable. You like that play, Morgan? Yeah, I tried to get as much out of it as she could. I'm surprised she didn't get a little bit closer. There must be just enough wind in her face. Stephanie Kiriakou now. Yeah, this one's just a little bit awkward over the bunker. Green slopes away too, Kira, makes it a little bit tougher, a little bit, yeah, maybe a crosswind, I guess, now. Oh, gosh. Just trying to be so perfect off yeah. of ground that is still a little bit soggy. Yeah, you just got to get that on the green. Get it 15, 20 feet, give yourself a chance. Made a mistake hitting it there. Now you've really put yourself in a, in a bind now. She's in a tie for fourth, so. Basically, Karen, a very similar shot, maybe a little closer, obviously, but not much easier. No, I mean, the, the, the good news here is that, I mean, she can actually see what she's got. She's closer to the green, and I think when you're up here, you can actually see that there's a slope to the right of the flag that you could actually technically use, but you still have to keep that club moving through the ball. You know, you, there could be no room for deceleration here. 
I also feel like this is the time where you got to quiet your mind, kind of slow your mind down, stay in your process. Just got a big wind gust. She's still got the face wide open, trying yeah, to play a big flop shot here. Similar to the one she just hit the shot before. This one, more solid contact. We'll come off the slope here and talked about not quite. Ah, making a mess of this hole. She'll have that left for par on a par five that she can get pretty close to in two, so. Hasn't made a bogey since the 11th hole yesterday, so. Looks like she'll be next to play as well, so. Try to get things together, get your emotions ready, slow yourself down. That's the hardest part when she's got herself in the position she has. She knows how well she's played. Made the mistake on the second shot. And Jimmy, if you're Lynn Grant, are you just trying not to look at this? What, oh, what yeah, are you you're, doing? You're, and I think that's what Lynn's done. She's kind of focused in on your own, your own part of your own game. You're not focusing on anybody else. Uh, control the things, like I said, she can control. She's actually taking some sneak peeks at the, uh, the leaderboard, which is right in mm. front of this green. So she's she's looking to, to find out where she is and, and what she's got going on. Cad is also playing close attention and it's just cycled around so they know that they have a three shot lead. Were you a leaderboard watcher? Absolutely. I couldn't keep my eyes off it. How about you, Morgan? The same. I, and especially for Lynn in this position, she has to know. She needs to know where she is because it could determine how she plays this finishing hole. And Jim, I think that feeds into what you were saying about her from Missy Farke about how um, she's a winner. She likes to win. She's going to want to know that and where she where she is. Absolutely. Carry on now for par. They got it. She'll drop a stroke here and fall back into tie with Fossey. Good news, you get one more hole. Maybe you can rebound, make a birdie on the last one. Lynn Grant now for birdie. One is down the hill. It's a very similar putt to the one that Allison Corpus just made for birdie, maybe a foot or two longer. Shoved it just a little bit. She'll still head over to 18 with a three shot lead, which is usually pretty comfortable, but just kind of kind of stay in the moment. Three Walk shots the at the moment. If Corpus can get up and down, that could change. 51 yards back into the win. Oh, I like it. That's what major champions do. No doubt Lynn Grant saw that it was a three shot lead and she also saw who was approaching Corpus. It's a cute little pop. <laughs> and this is a birdie chance for Allison Corpus at 18. Something to think about with one hole remaining. And she did what she needed to do. Go out, make a lot of birdies, have a hot round, nothing to lose. Try and put some pressure on Lynn. On the tee, Lynn Grant. With the wind on her back. The tee is sheltered with some pine trees. That and as she's like done it. I was going to say, as she, she's done every day, Morgan, just striped it down the fairway. Uh, that didn't look like a player who's trying to protect any kind of a lead, showing any nerves whatsoever. What a drive. Looks a lot like the tee shot Corpus hit last week at Pebble on 18. And Kiriakou trying to shake off that last hole and finish in style. Yep. Woo! Uh, focus, focus. 
Yep, that'll do as well. Yeah, both that'll... players should be able to give this green a go in two. And it's Northern Hanson and Emerson. We'll see if that is the shot selection for Lynn Grant on the verge of her first LPGA Tour victory. She would become the 14th Swede to win on the LPGA Tour following in the big footsteps of Annika Sorenstam, Helen Alfredson, Lisa Lott Neumann and company. It would move her inside the top 18 in the race to the Globe. The CME Globe, Grant with a two-shot pad at the moment. It is a par five finishing hole. This young woman comes from golf pedigree. Morgan, her father, John, played college golf at the University of Western Florida back in the day. Had a brief stint as a professional in Europe before walking away to focus on raising his family, Lynn, his youngest daughter. He returned to golf later in life, playing in some European championships and on the Swedish Senior Tour. He said she would tag along with an ice cream in hand, seemingly not caring that much about the round itself, but now she has blossomed into this fine golfer. That's just, what, what a way to learn. Bring your kid along with you Bring to your kid the to driving Rockdale. range. It's awesome. And I mean, her grandfather also, a Scottish golf pro, he moved to Sweden in the 1970s, where, of course, Lynn was born. She won a Ladies British Open Amateur Championship on the same course 49 years later that her grandfather, Jim, won a Scottish Boys. So nice ties there. Maria Fossey at 18. And that course was North Berwick, by the way, for curious minds who love the history side of the game. Fossey looking forward to another fun week next week on the LPG Tour, the Dow Great Lakes Bay Invitational, where she is a Dow ambassador and will partner with the captain of the Solheim Cup team for Team USA, and that is Stacey Lewis. But the moment right now is all about this 24-year-old Swede, Lynn Grant. She was a member of the Swedish national team. She played a junior Solheim Cup. We will see her in Spain, representing Team Europe for the upcoming Solheim Cup. While we have a moment, let's join Trip Eisenhower with Allison Corpus. Exactly. Um, I've got to ask you, when you woke up this morning, did you think you had any chance of, of winning this tournament? Honestly, no. I mean, like I said yesterday, like Lynn, Lynn's such a solid player. I mean, six shot lead is, is tough to overcome. So really just kind of came out and tried to just give it my best shot. What would you say was your biggest challenge this week after that emotional win last Sunday? Yeah, really just focus on getting rest throughout the whole week. I mean, didn't get any sleep Sunday night and then travel day Monday. So was a little tired, but um, just, yeah, just tried to stay focused throughout. Now, when you have a major championship, do you view major championships differently now than you did before last Sunday? Um, I try not to. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just another golf tournament. I'm going out there to try to play my best. So, um, no. <laughs> well, you certainly played your best this week. Congratulations. Kelly? Yeah, we, we have two more majors coming in this LPG Tour season trip. So, curious to see her mindset heading into those next two. Thank you for that. We've got the Amundi Ebion Championship and, of course, the uh, the Women's British Open coming uh, in August. So, you know, you got to look to perhaps Lynn Grant as being a favorite coming into the Amundi Ebion. Her most recent L.E.T. Tour win, Morgan, came on the same course. They'll be holding the Ebion. Yeah, we'll definitely know that golf course well, have good experiences there, knows how to win around that golf course. It's a little bit different playing in a major championship with the pressure of a major, but... I know that she's definitely looking forward to getting there late next week, getting her prep done. And it will she'll be riding a lot of confidence if she's able to come go there coming off of her very first win on the LPGA Tour. Next stop is Canada and then off to France. Fossey now for the birdie. Next up, of course, Dow Great Lakes Bay Invitational, then Canada, then France. And he said that Maria's teaming up with Stacey Lewis, her fellow Razorback. Yep. 
And we talked a little bit earlier about learning from other players in the team format, like Stephanie Kariaku had the opportunity at International Crown. Maria always talks about how much she learns from playing with Stacy in that event. And often that has propelled her to really solid finishes later in the last couple of seasons. I love the change of pace, too, of these team events. It's, it's really fun to watch, and the players really seem to enjoy it. Nice break from the pressure of the majors that take up a lot of breath this time of year. And Matilda Castron here playing with her best friend, Kelly Tan. Now they're looking forward to next week as well. It wasn't long ago that the Solheim Cup was played at Inverness Club, which is just on the other side of town here. And this is the young woman who hit the cup clinching putt for Europe. They were victorious in 21. And then Grant just trying to weather these conditions as well as the pressure, Karen. Yeah, she is. I think that a little bit of a gust of wind, maybe something just got in her eye just a little bit there. But she has 224 to the front, 247 to the hole. And. Yeah, she obviously knows where she stands. I think this shot is just to try and land this on the on the right side, front portion. She looks like she's got a lot of club. Nice drawing. Yeah, really well done, and that'll catch that pairing off guard. I'm not sure she saw them or if she meant to do that. That is something that I've never seen. I'm very confused by that, Karen. Yeah, I think she is too. I'm pretty sure that she was thinking it wasn't going to carry that far. I'm thinking that every day this week she's been laying it up to the front edge of the green. I mean, that even, might be the definition of adrenaline. But even with the players on the green, there, there's no reason to. This was Castron just a moment ago. Great line, just not enough speed to hole out there. I'm sure there's a little conversation going on between Fossey and Castron at the moment, wondering what just happened. A disappointing day for her, round of 73. I think she's <laughs> a, bit, a bit confused by that herself. A little extra protein from that bug, perhaps. <laughs> now Kiriaku. Well, the good news now is that Kiriaku knows that she can make it to that green quite comfortably. They both hit the fairway woods about the same distance. This one's hanging out to the right, though. Yeah, that's maybe just what Lynn was trying to do, tugged it a bit, but, but still there's no reason to hit that shot when the group in front is still on the green. Just like we saw Steph have a conversation with her caddy about on the previous hole. <laughs> Well, taking a look at the upcoming event, we've, we've talked about it, the Dow Great Lakes Bay Invitational. Looking forward to heading to Midland, Michigan, about two hours uh, north of Detroit. That's Saturday finish for you. Take note, that's at Fort Eastern on CBS. Looking forward to that. And also, we will have fantastic summer hoops all afternoon beginning with the WNBA at 1 Eastern with Phoenix taking on Washington followed by the big three that's all next weekend on CBS so she opens with a 64 says hello I'm here she follows up with a solid round of golf and then on Saturday takes advantage of soft conditions after a near four hour delay flirts with a 59 settles for a 62 and says, I'm a force to be reckoned with, and then comes out today and does nothing short of exactly what she needed to do to hold on to this lead. Yeah, and I talked to Frederick Wetterstrand with the Swedish Golf Federation. He said, he's known her for a long time, said she's a very self-driven person. You can't tell her what to do. She has been a boss for her own career since she was a young girl. and. He's also really impressed that she's a role model for younger girls in Sweden. She gives back to the young girls at her club, at her high school, and also to the young up-and-comers within the Swedish Golf Federation, really inspiring the next generation as well 
well, being a young, fresh face herself. Born June 20th, 1999, the same day Payne Stewart defeated Phil Mickelson at that famous U.S. Open at Pinehurst. Both of these women proven L.E.T. champions, combining for seven wins on the overseas also circuit. Also a winner on the Ladies European Tour and a two-time All-American for the Sun Devils of Arizona State University from Viken, Sweden. Please welcome Lynn Branch. She is a Sun Devil, but this victory will be credited to her performance in rain. That 62 yesterday set her apart from the fleet. She seems so cool in these moments. There's a look in her eyes that, Morgan, reminds me a bit of Jordan Spieth. You know, I remember Ben Crenshaw describing the look in Jordan's eyes when he was just coming onto the scene as a professional golfer after lighting up the amateur scene. He called it eyes like Wyatt Earp. She looks through the moments and seems to be comfortable pushing forward, not backing up. Yeah, no, and we we mentioned it, of course, at the Scandinavian mix, the same thing, not be intimidated by that pressure playing against the men there. And then here today, it's not easy to play with a big shot lead. She stayed really in her own bubble, kept trying to hit the best shot that she could hit in that moment, make birdie after birdie, and clutch par after clutch par. Pretty good hands by Kiriakou. Would have loved to have had something like that on the previous hole, but uh, much more straightforward shot there. And now Corpus taking care of the fans. Just think about what's happened in her life over the last seven days. I mean, you can relate. When you, when you win that major championship, everybody wants a piece of you. Uh, and especially when you do it on a stage like Pebble Beach Golf Links, it's one of those moments where people tune in as much to see the golf course as they do the women playing it. And this was a huge stage for her to introduce herself to the mainstream sports followers, not just the golf fans. Yeah, an, an impressive performance this week. Finishing second is what it appears here. Karen, you did the same thing after coming off your win at the AIG Women's Open. I did. I did. I did. But... Uh... I don't know, Alison seems to have got everything all together for herself. This putt for Lynn, she knows that she's just two putts from here. Keep it simple. You can kind of sense that that game face that you talked about, Kelly, has kind of relaxed a little bit since she hit the ball on the green, knows that she has this in her grasp and can enjoy the moment. It's nice to know, too, that she has these two gears, first and fifth. Uh, she can. She was in fifth gear for most of the tournament. And then when she needed to be in first gear on this particular Sunday with a six-shot lead, she didn't throw it into reverse. She was able to maintain that low speed and make important par saves when she needed to. Uh, never put herself in a very dangerous spot. There were some interesting moments, but never put herself in jeopardy. And a nice way to finish. Joining the group there, tied fourth with Ji Yu Lin. And another teaching moment for her. At just 22 years old. And now Grant, two years her senior. Poised to become a winner. A new star is born on the LPGA Tour, and her name is Lynn Grant. We better get used to another Swedish golfer winning tournaments. We 
certainly expected big things from Lynn Grant this year. First opportunity to play full time on the LPGA Tour. And what a win. She seems so comfortable in her skin. She knows who she is. She knows where her feet are. And now they are firmly planted in the winner's circle. And she talked about not being able to play in the United States like she wanted to last season, learning how to win, learning how to grind it out on the LET. And did she grind it out this week? Just spectacular stuff. As you've watched her grow in this short time that she's come into frame for us, what do you make of her potential going forward? Uh, the sky's the limit. She is so much fun to watch. She's got such effortless power. And power is one thing, but making those clutch putts coming down the stretch with all of the pressure that comes with trying to win for the very first time on the LPGA Tour, that was very impressive today. Not having her sharpest iron game, but she made those clutch putts. I look back to the putt on 10, the putt on 11, the putts on 15 and 16 that really never gave the chasers any hope. Now she didn't get serious about golf until she was about 12 years old. And look how far she has come. In a dozen years, she is now an LPGA Tour winner. And we'll see her at the Solheim Cup. Lynn Grant by three at the Dana Open. Our coverage continues. The Dana Open is sponsored by the Epson Tour. Road to the LPGA. Well, this was the scene just a moment ago. Lynn Grant capping off a stellar week with a birdie at 18 to capture her first LPGA Tour win at the age of 24. A young woman who didn't turn professional until the fall of 2021. Enjoying that champagne shower from her friends and peers. Lynn Grant rising to the stop. Rising to the moment and a rising star in this sport. It is a three shot win. She started the day with a six shot advantage, uh, Morgan. It's, it's hard to say she never looked back because there were some heavy hitters coming up in the rearview mirror, but she held her own while not doing anything terribly flashy. Now, Karen Stupples is with the winner. Thanks, Kelly. LPGA winner, Lynn, does the reality of winning meet your dreams of winning? Yeah, I've been thinking about it all day. I think I've uh, imagined this day so many times in so many ways in my own mind. Um, and, you know, just, I mean, being here now, I'm just so speechless. And at the same time, I feel familiar with the setting for some reason. But um, it's just so fun. At the start of the day, you had a six shot lead. How tough was it starting the day knowing that you had such a big lead? Um, I think it was quite, you know, I, I could be a bit more relaxed, but I also knew that, I mean, this course is very scorable. So in my mind, I was just, just thinking that someone was going to shoot the same score I did yesterday. Um, obviously, the conditions are a bit tougher today, but um, that was my game plan and mindset coming into today. Was there one point during the course of the day that you thought, I've got this, this is my championship now? Um, I don't know, probably on 17. Um, I felt like I saw Allison was 17 under, and um, I knew having that birdie putt on 17, if I hold it or not, it didn't really matter. I had a three-shot lead coming into the last one. I had success at the Evian Golf Course. We're going there as our next major. How much confidence does winning here mean that you can take into that major coming up? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm in great uh, form at the moment, obviously, and I really like that golf course. I mean, I played well there both last year and I had a win there this year, so uh, I'm really excited to go back and, and play there again. Lynn Grant, winner on the LPGA Tour. Many congratulations. Thank you. 
fresh new face for a lot of golf fans to get acquainted with. We'll be seeing it in the winner's circle. You get the feeling uh, for years to come with this kind of talent. When she put herself in trouble, she found a way out. This is a big moment right here. She got off to a bit of a shaky start, missed some short birdie putts early. Bad position there on eight, but chipping it in changes the momentum. Nervy par putt at the 10th, but that was center cup. And an important moment to not let things unravel early. She had holed out on the 11th for Eagle yesterday and had this for her second today. Seems like a bit of a letdown here, Kelly. <laughs> Still lead to a birdie and another clutch putt there. And now this her second at 13. Already at 20 under par. I stuffed it in here yesterday. Watch the spin on this one. How do you rank her ball striking overall? It's just, she's such a beautiful golf swing. Yeah, Corpus does as well. That was for Birdie to put on some pressure. Minji Lee tried to do it early in the round, a two-time major champion, but faded quickly with a double at 11. This newly minted major champion did her best to put the pressure on Grant, but she was seemingly impervious. Uh, she would have some moments like this where she looked a bit shaky, but was always making the putts when it mattered most. Lost a few irons to the right, but was able to recover from all except one. Corpus getting it to 17 under, and we're thinking, okay, we're not done just yet. But with two par fives remaining, this is such an important par putt. She makes it look academic and then handles her business coming home. Corpus trying to put up one more good fight at the 18th, had this for birdie. And that 65 would tie her career low round. She had done it three times before today, but it wouldn't be enough. Lynn Grant said to Karen Stuffles just a moment ago, she felt that on 17, she had this pretty much locked up. And a lot of players would be standing on the 18th tee with a three-shot lead nervous. They'd feel like the only thing I can do here is screw this up. And she didn't feel that way. She felt very confident. This was a bit odd here. You don't often see a ball on the green with the group in front still there. And this the winning putt. One of what could be many to come for this aggressive and steely player. Taking a look at the updated CME Globe standings. You've got Lynn Grant moving up quickly with this win. Alison Corpus also making a nice move again, coming off that win at the U.S. Women's Open. Jin Young Ko still leading the way. Let's take a moment and rejoin Karen Stupples. Uh, thanks very much, Kelly. Stephanie, very kind of you to join me here. Enjoyed following you around today. I know it wasn't quite your day today, but what do you take from this experience of being in contention on the LPGA? Uh, yeah, I think this might be kind of my first or second time in contention. So I was trying to kind of figure out how to deal with all the nerves and everything that came with being in the final group. And I, I found out that adrenaline <laughs> plays a big part. So I was kind of missing missing the flags a bit long today. But yeah, next time I'm in this position, I have that in the toolbox. We commented a little bit on the program about how playing for Team Australia at the International Crown kind of has allowed you to blossom a little bit. What was that experience like for you playing as part of Team Australia? Uh, it was amazing. I mean, any time you get to represent your country, it's great. Um, and the girls in the team just made it a whole lot easier. I did have a good week there, and, you know, playing match play, I, I feel I can be more aggressive. So learning that and being able to take that into normal tournaments really helped. After your experience this week, what do you look forward to the most within your career moving forward? Um, I said to my caddy coming out the last that being in the final group is kind of fun, so I'll try to do that more often. But there was lots of good stuff this week, so a couple of things to tweak. So I have a week off, so lots of good things heading into Europe. I think keeping that new putter in the bag might be one of them. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> it kind of worked this week. Brilliant. Thanks so much for your time. Best of luck the rest of the season. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, they keep getting younger. I remember Morgan Pressel, the young star that she was. Uh, Stephanie Kiriakou, just 22 years old, and Grant, just 24. And what a week for the Swede. It's a three-shot victory at the Dana Open, and we're not done just yet. We'll put more thoughts into this one. We'll be thinking about this one for a while.
and now Lynn Grant here on the LPGA Tour, and also Steve Stricker winning on the PGA Tour Champions uh, not far away at Firestone in Akron, Ohio. So the state of Ohio getting a nice boost with uh, some quality champions, Morgan and Lynn Grant and Steve Stricker. Um, you know, with all of the young talent on the LPGA Tour today, um, golf fans are just now getting familiar with Lynn Grant, but, you know, people who were attached to the game like you and, and other analysts and experts, they, they know of this young woman uh, long before this. What What is her potential as it relates to competing with the likes of a Corda or a Minji Lee, uh, Allison Corpus, et cetera? Uh, she has all the tools, and I was very impressed with her performance not only this entire week, but today. She didn't take anything for granted out there. She really played to her strengths, which is her ball striking. When she did get in trouble, made a few clutch putts. She said she loved this golf course, Love that you could be aggressive. That is her nature. Love that you feel like you could birdie every hole. Well, you know what? She made 23 birdies and an eagle this week. That's going to get the job done around this golf course with hardly any mistakes. And it was just really fun to watch. I feel like we're really watching something special in Lynn Grant from what I've seen in just the handful of events that I've had the opportunity to watch her up close. So it will be fun to see how this really propels her into potentially a superstar career on the LPGA Tour. I've been listening very intently to her answers to questions and the common theme that I've noticed is that she really focuses on the things that only she can control. And also, she seems to be open about the fact that she's very comfortable with a big lead or a narrow lead. Uh, there is something about this woman that seems a bit impervious to expectations and pressure, outside sources. Yeah, and that's one of the things that Annika said. She's just so focused and so determined. And we saw that today. We saw that all week. There aren't many players in golf who are comfortable with big leads. But now we've seen it twice from Lynn Grant. Very impressive. Well, she will bask in this moment. Lynn Grant getting it to 21 under for the week, flirting with the tournament record of minus 23 held by Sari Pak. A big congratulations to Lynn Grant, the 2023 Dana Open champion. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports in association with the LPGA.